this is all worn so we've gone off that little taper edge where that's got a few dings in it now bronze zero so It's just got a bit there, and I think it's that lump on the hole there. It's just on that on the hole, it's got a bit of a jump there. Just a couple of thou, and then back on the hole there again, it jumps again on the hole there. But there is a bit of a five thou, but it's on the old uh, probably the split pin or. Now we've got this done, it's turned out quite nice actually on the lathe. It's got a good pin, proper good fit in it. Um, we've trued this up, this bolts to the tractor and then the clutch pedal goes on this. Um, since I've pressed the bush in that I made, Just to true it up like you know what happens with these the bouncing of the engine and the years of work the pedal instead of being straight up like that it ends up leaning like that and floating around so now as we've trued that up we haven't turned it to uh, any specific size it's just turning it to clean it up to get it straight again um, just put a bit of a chamfer on there, leading edge, help the pedal go back on when reassembling it. Um, there's that. Um, when I uh, turned the bush and bored the centre out, it was a real good snug fit, but since pressing it in, the pressure of pressing it in has shrunk it a bit so it could it just needs a, a slight honing out just to get it you know it's, it's all hand fit it's all there's no specific dimension to any of it it's, it's all just suck it and see job um i found another washer board the middle out to suit because it's you know proper it's a one-off size uh, the last thing I might do is that washer may be a bit too thick to fit in there but the back of the pedal's got a bit of a wear on it here so I might get my face mill in the milling machine and just true, true a section up here so it's going to be a good flat fit against that and it gets rid of any, any play in it so that's the last operation you can see we've been trying to make it fit, but it's just shrunk it. The pressure of the 
the interference fits just shrunk it enough whereas it's it's going to be tight and if it gets a slight bit of rust on it it's going to seize up the pedal will go down and not want to return um, so that's the next job just honing that out and then this this actually goes on the side of the gearbox and there's one on either side and the floor pan bolts to it and this is your hand clutch lever now this cam this is all reason I've took the floor up on it this cam rotates like that and presses on the back of this to press the clutch lever down it's for when they were you know driving threshing machines or anything they could just operate it by reaching in and disengaging and engaging the clutch what had happened the bolt that was in it it was still in but the threads had just stripped so it was just it was floating around all over the place so i've just gone to the next nearest size um 7 sixteenths UN, uh, unc if i remember correctly um and it's just a case of drill it ream it face this because it was because it's been all over the place it's worn face it drill it tap it and then you know this is good to go again you know you know there's, there's no play at all in it so next job's ream the pedal out and get this fitted onto that side there we go so let it talk yeah now if you look down there this is all pushed in that way and the wash is still a bit thick and this is home so the next thing i'll mill a bit off the back side because of that wear pattern that's on the back side of the pedal and hopefully what we mill off should send the pedal back just enough to reveal the full hole then we can get the uh, split pin in so we'll see you on the mill next now the way I've got this set up I've assembled the pedal the way it goes it's just loosely gripped in the vise I've put a machinist jack here just to support it and then I've put the stub which has got a machine face here against the quill with no collet in and then I've just gently raised the knee until it's all lined up that's going to be running true to the bore that's a machine surface against the machine surface of the quill so hopefully if I clamp all this up carefully just to avoid vibration I should be able to lower the knee 
remove this and then just machine it's I've worked out it's just under two mil 1.93 mil um you know give or take it's agricultural it's just not it's not it's not an earth it's not a space shuttle um so yeah that's good to go I'd say I'll just finish clamping it up and uh, we'll get cracking right we've got it all clamped up now there's a machinist jack here it's cinched down with a tow clamp packed up the back's all packed out it's tied down here with a tow clamp just a feeler gauge to take you know fine tune the gap and then when you look here it's sat down in its bore if I it, there is a good bit of resistance but I can still turn it but if you look at the gap between the quill and the machine surface of the stub that should be near enough for what we're doing Half the battle with this engineering lark or machining is the setup. It's like 20 minutes to get it right and measure twice, cut once. Anyway, we'll go and start the big generator now for some three phase sparks, get the bridge port going. Now I'm struggling to film this, I forgot my tripod, but anyway, we're motoring, you can just hear it, we're just making contact, so we'll switch to that, zero everything out and we avoid confusion, and we're going to feed in with the knee. Sorry I couldn't film any of the machining but um, I couldn't record and do the job at the same time. Um, I roughly worked out 1.93 mil to take off to uh, get a good fit on the washer. Anyway, we ended up taking 1.88 and I thought I'd stop because it's easy to take the chips off but damn hard to put them back on. So anyway, that has worked out really good it looks a bit ski whiff because when Marshall's built this zoom in this piece isn't even welded on straight so that's why it's been a bit awkward to clamp it up but turning the stub against the back plate of the lathe when it was turned and then setting the machine face against the quill with nothing in it it should all be good enough for what it is it's only a pedal you know it's it's not like a crankshaft or anything specific but anyway there we go that's that job done we can put it back together that's good and tight there's no rock in it it's free though because look you can move it by hand it's only going to whir again there, so uh, you know, in years to come, but it's going to have an easier life now, now as it's in retirement. So that's a good tight fit. There'll be no rock in that pedal anymore. Uh, you know, that's a quick shot of the setup. You know, we're only improving on things. Uh, you know, putting the newness back. Anyway, it's took a while to film this, uh, just been doing bits and pieces uh, as I've had spare time and uh, hopefully it should turn out alright and I hope everyone enjoys it.
Well, today I've uh, refitted all the floor. Um, I've, I've used stainless bolts. Someone will thank me in the future. Um, anyway, this is all back working again. Clutch pedal's nice and straight. This is nice and solid, not, not floating around how it used to be. Anyway, if we give it a... And watch the pedal. There you go, that's just stop your thrashing engine or uh, your thrashing machine or your saw bench. Also, it, it assists quite a good bit when you're swinging them by hand with the handle. It just takes the weight of the gearbox and that off. So, you know, every little helps when you're swinging these big things. So, it's been a few years since that's worked. Um, yeah, pig of a thing to take to bits like, um, just all these bolts were all seized up, I had to get down and cut them off and all sorts, so that's why I've gone with stainless as replacements. Um, I've bought a rubber floor mat from Robert Crawford, so I'm just going to uh, seam seal these cracks up, stop the water going down them because they're quite prone to swelling and blows the side of the mud guard out. I'll seam seal them up and then I'll put my rubber mat on and then I've got new seat cushions for it and then it's done. It's as far as I'm taking it for why it's in my ownership. It's had an engine rebuild, it's had new wheel bearings, it's had new tyres, it's had the wheels stripped, sandblasted, new inner tubes. You know, it's it's an older restoration paintwork wise, but just doing the wheels sets it off. Makes all the difference. So uh that that'll do for what for, for why it's in my ownership. Um I've plenty of other stuff to be doing. Um this McCormick Deering's next. I've owned this for quite a while and it needs just a bit of fine tuning wheel bearings, it's had the front wheels stripped and sandblasted um, need, badly needs the back ones doing before they go rotten the full of chloride weigh an absolute ton so that's the next job strip them off and get them sorted I might whiz the head off and grind the valves in because chuffs a bit anyway that's another story there's all these to go at yet future projects so much to do so little time anyway i hope you all enjoyed watching it um catch you on the next